Come on, get your hand up in the air. Come on, get your hand up in the air. Say, I will rise.
excited about being in here on Palm Sunday today. No, you're not. Come on, I can't hear you. Come on, how many of you are excited about Holy Week beginning today? something. I can't hear you. How many of you are looking for God to do something? And how many of you believe he's going to open every closed door? Come on, by Easter. Come on, somebody clap your hands. It's the year. He's not dead. He's alive. I'm going to tell you something right now. He's coming back very soon. He's not coming back for, for an anemic church. He's coming back for a blood bought. Come on, Holy Ghost wash. Come on, somebody. Church that will prevail. Come on, even at the gates of hell. I will build my church. That's what he said. And I'm going to tell you something today. I got a revelation. It's, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I got a revelation I've been asking him about. I got the answer. You know, I don't know about you, but sometimes God waits till 1159. Wow. And at 1159, all of a sudden, bam! Everything opens up. That's the kind of an encounter we're going to have today. You can go and give God praise. I'm telling you, I know that I know that I know that I know that I know. I'm telling you right now, shout out, I know. Say, I know that I know. In Jesus' name. Now, give somebody a high five right there next to you, right there. Come on, give them a high five. Amen. Dean, give us something over there. Come on, quickly, quickly, quickly. Come on, grab somebody right now and tell them, I know that I know that I know. Come on, come on. And he's on the throne. He's coming back soon. Something big is about to happen. The door is about to open for you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Listen, we've got a lot. Come on, amen. Get, go on, give God another clap of praise right now. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want you to tell your neighbor right now. Tell him, I'm telling you, prophesy. Today, my God, today's a day of prophecy. If you believe it, shout a big amen. Listen, everything that happened in the triumphal entry was all about prophecy they they, they, they they came to the place of bethany we're going to talk about bethany today i'm telling you the house of habitation if you feel the presence of god in here today clap your hands and make some noise yeah. somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. They, they, they you know mary came and she anointed his feet you know everything was prophetic he rode on a donkey oh someone say glory to god Everything that happened, everything that occurred was prophetic. And I'm going to tell you right now, God has a prophetic word for you today. That thing that looked like it was dead is coming back to life. Amen. See, the problem is, is the church waits till next week. I ain't waiting. We're not waiting. We're a prophetic church. Oh, you can give God praise right now. We're a prophetic church. I'll tell you right now. I'm telling you, this is your week. I got fire in my eyes right now. I got something in my soul. I got something that's about to bust open upon you. I got an answer from heaven. And when I got that, you better get out of my way. I, I feel like a bulldozer today. For Je Anybody want to be a bulldozer for Jesus? Want to push some things out of the way? Come on. Amen. Bury some things that need to get buried. Richard rides, drives a bulldozer right here for a living, man. Oh, my God, I got a bulldozer guy right here. Glory to God. You know what they gave me, Richard, at the Road to Glory conference? 
They threw it to me. I didn't. And I said, what is this? They said, it's for you. And they didn't even know what it was. This is your key, they said. They were throwing keys out everywhere. And I looked at my key that they threw to me, and it was a case bulldozer key. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I want to be a bulldozer for Jesus. Amen. 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 Tell your neighbors. Tell, tell them you're in the right place today. Amen. Say, your breakthrough is here already. Yes. Amen. Say, he already paid the price. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Man, if you can't tell, I'm excited. Glory to God. I just, I mean, I, I've, I've been having an encounter with God today. Someone shout. The title of the message today is Roll Away the Stone. Say it. Roll, roll, roll away, the, away stone. the stone. How many of you are ready to roll the stone away today? Wow. See, it sounds like it's, it's, it's uh, without me. Like, what? Yeah, did you miss it, Pastor? <laughs> did you miss it? Like, that's, this isn't Easter yet. Well, 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 you're not supposed to be doing that sermon today. Or prophesying? God did. Yeah. I said God did. Yeah. I did. I, God had the Easter, listen, God had the Easter sermon before Easter. Wow. Amen. 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 You're not getting it yet because you haven't been in the Word. <laughs> uh-uh. He spit John. If you've been in the Word, you'll know that God already preached. He preached the sermon before Easter ever came That's right. That's right. and he did it at the tomb of Lazarus <laughs> oh someone say this is a setup today this is a setup today say I'm being set up I'm being set up, being set up. Come on, someone say hallelujah Amen. this is a setup I'll tell you this is a divine listen we got some guests welcome our guests in the house put yes. your hands together right now yes. Come on, we got, we got guests in the house, they're everywhere here, they're online. Come on, put your hands together, Calvary. Make some noise for all those watching online, Welcome. on the broadcast, on the rebroadcast. And, and uh, I want you to come on down here with me here and help me. We've got some special guests that are here. I want you to welcome, for three and a half years, I have known this guy, but I've not met him. Al Hogue, come on up here. I want you to welcome Al Hogue, come on. Look at him. From Texas, come on, from Hunt, Huntsville, Huntsville, Texas, come on, come on, great. <laughs> now you left your bride back there, get up here, Chris. I'm going to introduce him for the first time. Now we did a wedding yesterday, we had a tremendous time. Come on, someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, we had a tremendous, tremendous time yesterday. I'll tell you right now, this is just the wedding season. I did a wedding yesterday, these guys got married, met online. Someone say hallelujah. They met on 714. Come on, you need to give God praise. They yeah. literally met on 714. It's where they met. They met on 714. And I did a wedding. We did. It's the 714 dating app. Yeah. <laughs> That's the place to find your bride. Someone say hallelujah. Or, or your groom. Amen. And, and, and so this is, this is, this is, this is, this is so much fun. I'm doing, I'm doing another wedding uh, on Saturday next week, and this is just great. Someone say hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about what God's doing. And, you know, the, we did the Hoffman wedding yesterday, Alex and Hannah. Give God praise right now. i tell you right now, it, it just it, what God's doing. This is an ex How many of you know this is an exciting time to serve the Lord? It's just exciting. So it's great, man, great to get to meet you guys. I mean, meet you for the first time. And I feel like I've known you forever, you know. But I want, I want, I want, I want to just take a moment right now and tell everybody what 714 has meant to you. First of all, if you don't know Al, can we bring the website up? He is an artist. Come on, give God praise. I believe the arts are coming back. Come on, how many believe the arts are coming back to the church? And here, here's your, this is your page right here, right? I think we got it pulled up here. The, 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 yeah, they're going to they're gonna bring up, just scroll it up right here. Here, here is the newest uh, painting that he just finished right here. It's called Guardian Angels, right? And, and, and you got to get a copy of this because over here, all the way over, 
Take that little finger and scroll it down to the table over there to the right, right there. Yeah, right there. Over there, if you look real close, there is laying on that table a book. And it's a very unique book. It's entitled, Did Jesus Have a Belly Button? It's right there. I tell you, it's right there. I just, I just love. What, thank you for doing that. It, it was, it was great. So tell everybody what has happened in your life over the last three and a half years. Hey everybody, it's good to be here. It's finally uh, able to put the faces to my prayers now. And 714 has been a godsend for me. Uh, when I, when I started, I was. Uh, so so Christian, uh, I would say I was warm, a warm Christian. You know, I haven't been saved, but since 2016, and uh, really 714 uh, really got me going into my faith. I really stepped into a, a deep faith when I started 714, and through uh, Pastor Horvath's leadership. Uh, I learned a lot very quickly and uh, was able to uh, really go deep into my faith. Let everybody shout, say discipleship. So uh, I, learned, I learned a lot of things very quickly and one of the things that I learned was obedience to, to God. And I started fasting and praying and at, at the time I was still drinking. I had had a drinking problem all my life. Uh, I come from a long line of alcoholics. Uh, my father wasn't really a bad alcoholic, but his father was, and his, his father was. So great, great grandfathers way back with a lot of uh, family curses. And I learned all about that and how to, how to break the family curses. And I learned that on 714. So I started fasting and praying, and within just a matter of a couple of weeks, I was delivered from, from alcohol. Come on, everybody, right here. Come on, this is your fruit. Somebody give God praise. Come on, somebody, come on, right now. Come on. So, so uh, after that happened, I re my faith really started to blossom, and uh, God really came into my life in a big way. I kept praying and fasting, and my father was delivered. Come on, his father got delivered, and his father got born again. Come on, you need to give God praise right now. His dad got saved. I kept fasting and praying. My daughter was in a homosexual relationship I kept fasting and praying she got into a big fight with her fiance she was about to be married and they broke up within a couple of weeks she met her new husband come on man you cannot make this stuff up somebody needs to shut up So she is now married. I went down there to her, to her wedding. She's married to a really, really nice guy. Super family, a Christian family. Praise God. Yep. And and, 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 we, and, 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 and we and we prayed, and she got that job as a teacher. Oh, yes. Come on, get, it was a sign yes. to her that God was yes. real. Come on, give God praise. God opened the door, gave her her heart's desire to prove that he's a real God. Someone say hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. And, she just yeah. and, and Josh, Josh did not, Josh just looked at me and he said, I didn't know we were doing this today. And he's wearing the shirt. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people will humble themselves, come on and pray. Come on. Somebody give God some praise and seek my face.
Amen. We can't take this off. No way. No way. Deliver it from on high. Yes. I tell you what, the power of God, the power of prayer, it's real. Yeah. Whew. And wow. uh, I'm just so thankful, so thankful for, for 714 because it really has been a God. And now look what's standing yeah. next to you. Here. This was the last, the last great miracle that happened. The last one, not not the very last one, but the but the most recent one. Anyway, uh, we had been in contact for what a year and a half or so, uh, off and on, and uh, I was always a bit curious about Chris, and and she was curious about me. So then finally just, just Aren't they cute? We're so happy for you. Just just a few just a few months ago. Uh, I mean in, here, End of August. End of August. End of August. That, I mean, if the Holy Ghost wasn't involved, no way that would have happened. Because both her and I have been through a lot of trauma in our lives. Uh, in our childhoods and and me in the past 12 years, I, I went through a real bad divorce. So there was a lot of trust issues, and neither one of us had uh, a lot of trust going on for the opposite sex. <laughs> and, but over the phone. Everybody say, but God. But God, over the phone with the Holy Ghost. It was incredible. I mean, both of us were just totally blown away with how it happened. And it happened so quickly. Yeah, if I can jump in. So um, I connected. He's been on 714 since it bega began uh, in Huntsville, Texas. He's been on almost every day. And I started about a year and a half ago. And so we both realized, you know, that we were kind of interested. But we would connect periodically on Messenger, like once every month or two. and. Nothing was really happening, but all of a sudden at the end of August, the, his questions started getting more personal and deeper, and we realized within just a couple of weeks how much we have in common, yeah. both good stuff, but also difficult stuff that God has healed. Yeah. And we had so We're much in common. We're going to actually talk about that stuff today, too. Yeah. This is incredible. We had so much in common, but what we didn't have in common, we complement so well, and it just bloomed. So fast, we were like, what in the world's happening? We spent anywhere from three to five hours a day on the phone, and I work full time. <laughs> He's got his dad that he cares for, 89-year-old dad, and working as well from home and stuff, and yet we would spend three to five hours a day every day. And within just a couple of weeks, we were so glued together by the Holy Ghost, there's no other explanation but God. Yeah, and then by the end of September, on my birthday, <laughs> He sent me a card with some two dozen roses, bless his heart. And the card said, happy birthday, Mrs. Alan Hogue. Oh. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm 62. This is my first time, folks. And um, uh, <laughs> come on, give God so, praise in this. So, just I mean, a it was stunning. We were, we were come both. On, I can't think of something better. Hosanna. Come on, yeah. somebody. Come on. It's Palm Sunday. Yeah. What a but, great testimony. We went from end of August getting connected. Holy Spirit took over by the end of October, his birthday. I went down to visit him and his family, and he said, expect to be engaged by the time you come home. And I was engaged by the time I got home in early November. Like yeah. I didn't like surprises. I told him, don't, tell, don't surprise me. I've had enough trauma. You don't really, I don't know how I'm going to respond when somebody surprises me. So he told me in advance. Yeah. And um, by December 22, we were married. And so we got married down in Huntsville, which is where, you know, his dad is and his brother and sister and their families. And we hope to, at the end of spring or early summer, have a larger, more traditional kinds of service. But we kind of did the drive through <laughs> sort of thing <laughs> and um, got married quickly because we knew the Holy Spirit was saying get married by the end of the year because the door is open. Yes. The door is open. Amen. Amen. You're Amen. The, you're Amen. The door. Amen. Well, listen, we're rejoicing with you guys. Come on, give God praise. I just wanted you to get to meet these guys. And, and I think you guys did it right. You know, you, you know, you prayed together for a year and a half. Come on. Yeah, can I say something to that? So people go, how can you trust like that when you've only known him a couple of months to move down to Texas and leave everything? And I said, we've known each other a year and a half. 
And I said, when you see, when you know somebody every day, right. every morning, I've seen this man the pray every is morning. A, is a family. It Absolutely. is. It's a family, but yeah. you know their integrity, yeah. Yeah. his walk with God, yeah. his love for his family, his yeah. care for other people, yeah. the depth of his prayers, yes. you know, and his yeah. trust in God. Yeah. We started at the end of August with already a solid foundation of trust and knowing the integrity of each other because we connected every day on 714. I love it. And saw those prayers. I love it. And saw we're, the heart. We're rejoicing with you guys today. Come on, give God praise. Come on. Amen. We're going to get together tomorrow and I think we're going to have breakfast or something. Come on, put your hands together. God is a, a good God. And, and uh, I'm so excited. If you're excited about Jesus today, this Palm Sunday, put your hands together. Come on. He's no respecter what he's done for them. If you believe he'll do it for you, come on. Clap your hands. You're believing for something today. You're in the right place. And everybody said a great big amen. 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 Well, I want to tell you right now, you know, I, I, just, I just love. Hey, can we go back to his page for a second? I just wanted everybody to get to see the one thing on the page there. And if you're interested and you like lighthouses, okay, the, the, he has a whole section, I want you to see it, of lighthouses. And I thought that was not an accident either. Come on, put your hands together. Beautiful, gorgeous. Come on, give God praise right there, lighthouses. And... And uh, Al, I want to talk to you about getting one of those for here, for, uh, for the church. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. How many of you are excited about Easter week? <laughs> Amen. Well, uh, next week, this week coming up here uh, on, uh, on Sunday, I'm going to tell you something. Before I get to that, I'm going to tell you about Friday. Uh, it's absolutely, there's a jam-packed thing of what God's going to do. And uh, you're going to get to see this unfold here as a church, but the stage is going to be transformed for Good Friday, and we're going to be placing, you're going to get to see it when you walk in here. We're doing a message. We're going to have a massive cross that will be installed in, 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 on the platform, as well as a exploding tomb. And uh, we're going to be preaching the message, the power. I want to say that out loud. Say the power. Power. Of the cross. How many believe there is power in the message of the cross? Well, you're going to get that. That I want to tell you something right now. Get everybody you know here. We'll be having a, a communion on Good Friday. And I want to tell you right now, it is going to be absolutely spectacular. Then, <laughs> I'll tell you something. Easter Sunday, which is a message we're going to be delivering next week, is our life's message. I'm telling you, it's the thing that we have been preaching for the last almost four decades now, and that is resurrection power. Everybody shout it. Say it. Resurrection power. Power to open closed doors. How many of you believe God's going to open every closed door? door come on in your life if you believe that clap your hands right now and give god uh, some praise and i believe that god is saying get ready get ready get ready amen i want you to invite your friends invite your family invite anybody i want to tell you right now that needs the power of god get them here on good friday be here because I'm telling you something. This is going to be an illustrated thing that's going to happen with the exploding tomb. The Lord said to me at the beginning of the month, he said to me at the beginning of the year in December, end of December, he said, every month I'm going to give you a word for the next month. And, he, and, and so we started praying in in February. We gave the word on open doors, the year of the open door in January. And then in February, he said, pray in the favor. How many believe the favor of God is here today? Then he said, and then he said to me, he said, that March, I want you to pray in the power of God, resurrection power. Begin to pray it right at the beginning of the month. And then he said, go and look at what day the last day of the month will be. And I didn't know it then. I hadn't looked at it. And, it. and I went and I looked. I went, oh, my goodness. Easter Sunday falls on the last day of the month, the 31st, resurrection power. And I'm going to tell you what he said to me while we've been praying this 
all this time on 714 this month in the middle of that someplace God spoke to me and he said to me he said that listen this is what he said this resurrection power is going to explode and you're going to see signs and wonders between Easter and come on give God praise August come on go on give God glory right now when we have the signs and wonders conference and we have had more requests from people asking us about the signs and wonders conference by the by the way the dates are August I haven't memorized now because so many people have asked me the 11th through the 14th will be the signs and wonders conference it's gonna be incredible and I'm not gonna tell you yet because there's a major major person that we're working on getting here it'll absolutely shake up the whole Chicago area I'm gonna tell you right now all five states around here if we're, if we're able to bring this person in because I believe it's gonna be absolutely activating something that is going to literally seal up stuff that's good. I believe we're going to see more souls saved. And by the way, I'm looking at bringing tents in for the Signs and Wonders Conference. Come on. To do tent meetings. Someone say hallelujah. And I don't know what God, we've already talked with uh, with the teams and there's all already right now a revival that's broken out with the tents inside of Missouri right now. And we've been following and tracking it and the very people that we're working with it's already exploding in missouri but they've already you're committed to being here in august so give god praise right now i don't know what all the god's up to but i'm going to tell you this is uh you know and the lord said that there would be he said at the beginning of the year if you remember every three months there'll be a new open door so we're getting ready how many of you are getting ready to go into this next open door come on on easter everybody shout amen so I just believe that that's what God is doing, and that's what is uh, going to happen. Amen. Now, um, Josh, you want to share something? Uh, I was, uh, are we doing announcements? Yeah. Uh, there was two more, I think, yep. we had. Yep. Um, a, uh, at the beginning of April, we will have our next Bible study. Are we still studying the book of James then? Yeah. So April 5th, uh, that Friday, we will be having our Bible study at Dave Matson's house. It starts at 7 p.m., and that's open for young adults. We're aiming for 30s and, and under, right around that age range. Um, uh, but uh, And we have something for all ages. Everybody say all ages. Yes, sir. All ages. And next week, I, yeah, I forgot to say this, but next week also we're having our, I want you to make a lot of noise for the kids right now. It's a big deal. Get all your kids, your grandkids here. I've got our grandson here today. He's going to be back next week with us. I'm excited about it. Come What's on. That? We're having our Easter egg hunt. Yes. Come on. I'll tell you, the kids love it. What were you going to say? Yeah, yeah. Where are you at, Wesson? He's over there. Wesson, Bass. Wesson, wave at us over here. There he is. Come on, welcome my grandson <laughs> back there. He's back there with my other guys in the back row there. And uh, I'm just excited yes. about what God's doing in our kids and our grandkids. Yes. Amen? And then at the end of the month of April, uh, the, the 26th, we're looking to organize a worship night uh, that, that Friday for... Uh, young adults and youth. So uh, look uh, for that day, uh, April 26th, we'll have a, a close-up uh, worship night, encounter okay. night, just a time of what, not, what day is that? The 26th of April. Is that a Friday? Friday? Yes. Okay, Friday. All right. Excellent. Amen. Everybody say a great big amen. 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 So uh, today, I want to talk to you as we get ready to uh, we'll release the children right now for Children's Church. And as we get ready to receive the offering, the Lord told me to talk to you about the miracle of seed faith giving. Everybody say that right now. Say that. The miracle of seed faith giving. I want just one more time because there's a, there's a seed being planted in you right now. Say it one more time. The miracle of seed faith giving. And I heard the Lord say to me this. Because he said, pray in this entire month of power. And then I heard this this morning. I'm telling you something. I'm telling you, this is, it is game on in the spirit here right now. God gave me this word. He listened to this. I want everybody to just say this out loud after I tell you, because this is the word of the Lord. He told me to tell you there's power in your seed. Come on, say it right now. Say there's power, there's power in, in your, your seed. seed. Say it. There's power in your, in seed. your seed. Yes. And I just, I just, as you were saying that, I was just awestruck 
the seed of these families walking out to Children's Church. Our Children's Church has been been growing. Uh, there's 18 kids now. Praise the Lord. Can we just do a, a round of applause? Let's Come on, that, that, that's the power of your seed right yeah, there. And, and I'm going to tell you, and there's more coming. Everybody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, this is what the Lord said. Tell them that there's power in your seed. Then he said the second thing to me. Tell them that their seed is about to explode. How many of you want your seed to explode? Yes. I'm, I'm not really. Everybody, how many of you want your seed to explode? Yes. Now, you, don't, you, you may not know this, but in the natural, seeds explode. That's right. I'm going to show you this today. In the natural, God showed me this, that seeds explode. And so when the Lord said that to me, he took me to Mark chapter 4 and verse 8. And it's the parable of the seed, right? And there's other seed. He talks about all the seed. And he says, there's other seed. How many of you want your seed to fall on good ground? Yes. And it yields, watch what it says, a crop that sprang up. One translation literally says exploded. Come on, the seed did what? It exploded, exploded right? It, it, and it increases and it produces, come on, read it with me, 30, 60, and some as much as what? A hundred times as much. And then the next verse, he says, he who has an ear. How many of you want to have an ear? Let me see your hands to hear what God is saying today. Yes. Okay. Now, in the natural realm, seeds explode. And I didn't know this until I heard God tell me it in the spirit. And I said, Lord, I said to the Lord, I said, if that's true in the spiritual realm, then it must be true in the natural realm. And he said, it is true. And then he took me to Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20. If you have faith, everybody shout faith. faith. If you have faith as small as a what? Mustard, Mustard seed. Then you can speak to the mountain and it will move. Literally explode and nothing will be impossible for you. And if you actually look at that, I'm not going to go into it today because I've already done it and taught on it in the past, but it actually says that it will literally, the mountain will literally explode. How many of you need some mountains to explode? How many of you are believing for some things to move? Come on, inside of your life. Okay, watch this here. Your sowing of your seed today is being done by faith. And that seed has power, power to move something. And I'm telling you, even now, something is being moved from one place to the next. And a door is about to explode open. Can you read that for us? Verse 20, Mark 4. Are like seed sown on good soil. The word is seed. They hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown. That's right. Everybody say increase, increase. increase. and multiplication. 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 Now, the power of seed faith tithing is that when you give your tithe, you're giving by faith. Amen? Amen. According to the word of God, and it says that we come in covenant with God. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 10. It says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be no room, that there will, there will not be room enough to store it. Everybody say amen. amen. How many of you really believe it's the year of the door? Yes, sir. Windows and doors of heaven are going to explode wide open. When we tithe, we're coming in covenant with God. And he promises to provide all of our needs. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Come on, read it with me. My God will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Jesus. And the question is when? And the answer is when we give by faith. Faith is the what? Substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay, your faith, how many of you believe that your faith has incredible power? 
Incredible. How many wow. believe there's power in your faith? There's power in your faith. How many believe there's power to explode things? Amen. Okay. Seeds explode. Faith has power when it's released to explode the thing. And that's what we're talking about when we're talking about seed faith. I had an encounter with God this morning. He told me this. When he told me this, I said to him, I said, that if it's true in the, in the spiritual, then it has to be true in the natural. I had an encounter with God. I was weeping. I was crying. I'm telling you something right now. God took me to the Smithsonian website, and I watched this video. We're going to play it for you right now. Now, and this is going to blow you away. This is what happens with seeds in the natural realm. I but I want you to see this is what's going to happen to your seeds as you sow today. Ushers, you can come forward and watch it with them from the front. Yeah, come on. Here, hallelujah. Let's play that. Special pod. As the pod dries out, the pressure is intense. Somebody's feeling that pressure today in the spirit. Say, my seed's about to explode. My seed's about to explode. Touch me nots are even more highly sprung. The slightest contact triggers a chain reaction. Seeds light up the sky like a fireworks display. The world's about to see your seed explode. Another dramatic display comes from this unassuming looking plant, the squirting cucumber. It only takes a tiny vibration and the cucumber starts a spectacular show. Multiplication. Seeds disappear into the distance like rockets. spreading new plants in every direction. <laughs> Come on, give God praise, man. I'm telling you, that is real, real, real. Everybody say, seat faith is supernatural say it is a supernatural force when we obey the word of god i want everybody to say out loud say there is power in my seed say my seed is about to explode say 30 60 100 times in jesus name amen Amen. Leviticus 26 and verse 9. For I will look upon you favorably, and I will make you fruitful and multiply, and I will confirm my covenant with you, says the Lord. Let's pray. Amen. Lead us in prayer here today. For this morning, thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to give into your kingdom. Father, the thing that stood out to me in that scripture today was, so there will be bread in my house. Lord, let us continue to be faithful givers that that bread will multiply and multiply just like you multiplied the, the bread and the loaves of fish when you broke it, Lord, before the 5,000 people. Lord, let that, that seed multiply, Lord, supernaturally, Lord God. We thank you for every opportunity, Lord, that will be provided for every door open, Lord, that bread will flow from this house in the name of Jesus. Say out loud. Say, as I give, as I give I'm believing. I'm believing. My faith is going to cause my seed to explode in the form of souls and more souls. Come on, jobs and come on, I want you to see that seed flying today. Come on, come on, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlement, estates and in. come on, interest, income, rebates and returns. Glory to God. Gifts and surprises, finding money, bills decrease, bills paid off, blessings and and say thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I always may have more than enough to the kingdom. Come on, 
Gospel. Wow. Gospel, gospel of Jesus. Jesus. Man, I'm getting hammered by the glory. Someone give him some praise right now. Amen, amen, amen. You may receive the offering. Hallelujah. It's more wow. blessed to give than receive. Yeah. Help us not to forget that, Lord. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. God's opening up many doors in, in this time and in the future for us to be givers. Not just in this church. There's other open doors that are occurring that you're going to walk into. And you're going to be able to have an opportunity to give in those situations of the resources that God has given you. Everybody said amen. amen. Jesus. Now the events that lead into Holy Week, leave that run please. They are like none other. I'm going to tell you something right now. And this whole day is going to be a setup. Everybody shout set up. Set it up. Okay. The main event, watch this here now. Stay with me here very carefully here. The main event that triggers everything, listen to me here, was the death of Lazarus. The main the event that led the, up to Holy Week. Correct. The main event that led up to the triumphal entry. The main event that led up to Palm Sunday was the story of Lazarus. Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. Yes. And, and it is the event that triggers literally Jesus coming through the Eastern Gate. Mm. And so I'm going to have you open this up uh, with the, some of the backdrop here to this, Michelle. Uh, in John chapter 11, verse 21. We're going to stand in a moment for the reading of the word, but we're going to read some scripture, quite a lengthy piece here to get the context of this. Go on. Uh, verse 21 through 26 of Mark chapter 11. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Amen. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, <laughs> I know you'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? If you believe it, shout a big amen. Hallelujah. Now listen to this. Jump down to verse 38 now. It says, Jesus was terribly upset. You mean God gets upset? So he went to the tomb, which was a cave with a stone against the entrance. See, I want to tell you something right now. God's getting ready to open every tomb. Yeah. Then he said to the people, I want everybody to shout out loud. Say, he said to the people, what he did he say? He said to the people. So I want everybody to stand right here, right here, right here. Yes. Come on, stand up right here. Amen. And he said to the people, I want you to read real big. Roll, Roll the stone away. Come on, say it again. Roll, Roll the, the stone, stone away. away. Say it again. Roll, Roll the stone away. away. But Martha, read with me. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested. Watch wow. it here. Lord, Lord, he has, has been, been dead, dead for four days. The smell will, will be, be terrible. terrible. Okay, we'll be, we're in a different one down here now. Yeah. Okay, verse, verse 40. Jesus responded, read big with me. Did Lord, I tell I you that you, you would see, see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. One more verse, verse 42. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of these, these people standing here. By the way, they were unbelieving people. Yeah, right. Okay? And for their sake, so that they will what? You that exactly. you sent me. Raise your hands up to heaven right now. Come on. Pray out loud. Say, Lord, Lord right, now, right, now, right now, I am believing, I am believing you, today, you today that just like you, just like when, you, you, finish shouting, when you, finish shouting, you finish shouting, when you finish praying, when you finish praying, you shout, you shout, Lazarus, Lazarus, come out, come out. So I'm shouting, so I'm shouting right now, right now, Lazarus, Lazarus, come out, come out. You said, 
come out, you said you come said out. Come and untie him, tie and, untie him. him. And, let him go. and let him go. Lord, anoint us, Lord, anoint us today, today to untie, untie everything, everything that is bound up. Is bound anoint, up. Us anoint us to loose the captives. Anoint us to untie and, and command and the devil to let him go. In the name of Jesus, say, Lord, at the beginning of Holy Week, at the beginning of Holy anoint, week. Us anoint us with your presence. With your presence. Amen. Amen. Today, Today, in Jesus' name, Jesus. roll away roll every, every stone before every tomb. Release, release deliverance, deliverance victory, victory for every situation, every situation in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus say out loud, I believe the same power. The same that raised Christ that from the dead Jesus is here today here in here Jesus, today. Mighty Jesus' mighty name. Come on, now give Amen. him praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, come on. Shoot. 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 Glory. Shoot. I just, I just, just feel here as we're standing here in this midst that we just need to prepare ourselves. If there is any dead things that we and the people around us have called dead that we know in our heart of hearts, Jesus is calling us to roll the stone away. Right now, may we see with yes. our spiritual eyes and hear from the voice of the Lord the 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 call to roll these stones away in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now we're gonna give you a little bit of backdrop to Holy Week. Uh, do we want, uh, yeah, we can be seated. Uh, John 11, one through six says this. Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Verse 4 says, when he heard this, Jesus said, Listen to this now. This sickness will not end in death. Everybody say, this sickness, this sickness will, not end will not end in death. In death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Amen. Sometimes the delay of the thing that you're believing God for is for the glory of God. Sometimes God allows the delay. Yes. I want you to hear something today. He is in the delay. Yes. yes. Verse 5, watch this here. It says, Jesus loved, this is very important right here, that I want you to see this because we're going to go into five R's today. We're going to be looking at five different R's. Begins with R today, the message here. Roll away the stone. Everybody say it. Roll away the stone. Say it one more time. Roll away the stone. So watch what it says. Jesus loved, this is a powerful thing right here. How many of you want Jesus to love you? Yes. And how many of you want him to love your family? Yes. So he loved this family. He loved Martha Jesus and loved. his sister and, and her sister Mary and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. This is an incredible story here. And because he loved them. He stayed away two more days. And then he said to his disciples, after the two days, let us go back to Judea. And they responded, but Rabbi, a short while ago, the Jews tried to stone you there. Yet you want to go back? Let me tell you something right now. This was a setup for what will become the most important event in, hit, in the entire history of humanity of what we call Easter week or Holy Week. So in verse 9, Jesus answered, and he said, Are there not 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in the daytime will not stumble, for they see by this world's light. It is when a person walks at night that they stumble, for they have no light. And after he had said this, he went on to tell them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, 
But I'm going there to wake him up. Everybody say, wake up. Wake up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get better. Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought he meant natural sleep. And then he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. Okay, how many of you know that there are people that are in this room watching online, come on, or somebody that you know that has got a situation that looks like it is dead? Let me see your hands right now. I want to make sure, come on, I'm talking to the right uh, group today. Every hand virtually went up. Everybody say, Lazarus is dead. Say it. Lazarus is dead. dead. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. And then Thomas, also known as Didymus, said to the rest of his disciples, let us go also that we might die with him. <laughs> let us go. Let's just go. We're going to die. Let's go get it over with. Okay. How many of you have ever felt like that? Come on. Let me see if I'm, again, talking to the right people right here. Okay. Now, the title of the, of the message today is all about faith. Faith to roll the stone away. This is a setup, I'm telling you, for Easter. For the stone to be rolled away from Jesus' tomb, I'm going to tell you something right now, is what happens there is literally going to happen here in the story of when Lazarus dies. This is a backdrop literally to Holy Week. This is what literally will cause the crowds from everywhere to come. They literally come. They're come. They, and they don't first come to go to Jerusalem. Although they're heading to Jerusalem for Passover, they come to Bethany first because they want to see Lazarus that has been raised from the dead. That thing that looks like it's dead in your life, I'm telling you something is going to become, come on, an incredible witness to a lost, oh, give God praise right now, to a lost and dying world. So the backdrop is what happens with Mary and Martha and their brother Lazarus who has died. And it's found inside of their faith. There's an exit strategy inside of the story that opens, everybody say, opens the door. Opens, opens the, door. the door. Okay, to the triumphal entry of Jesus in Jerusalem. The message today is about becoming more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Come on. How many of you believe that he's already conquered? Come on. Give him praise right now. Come on. And how many of you want to become more than conquerors today? Wow. Come on. If that's you, everybody say amen. Amen. So Palm Sunday is all about triumphal entry for the believer. Yes. And I want to ask the question. We want to ask it today, Josh. Who needs Victory yes. for a situation today. Yes. Come on. Who needs a breakthrough? Come on, let me see your hands right now. Who needs God to roll away a stone for you? Mm -hmm. This is the miracle that will cause the crowds to swell in Bethany. Bethany literally means, literal translation, house of habitation. And what is Calvary Lighthouse? hub of habitation. Come on, this is a hub. Oh, give God praise for the presence of the Lord. Come on, that you felt, come on, here today. Come on, that you feel here right now. Come on, that you feel in worship. How many believe that the glory of God dwells in this place? Amen. The story does not start out, watch it here, with the death of Lazarus. It starts out, if you read the story and read it closely, it starts out with Lazarus, come on, being sick. It starts out, come on, I want to tell you something, with the relationship that, they, that Jesus has. Come on, before there's ever a crisis, there's a relationship. Everybody say amen. amen. And this brings us to the first point of the message today, the first R. I want everybody to say relationship. Relationship. You see, as we come into Holy Week, I want you to know something. Holy Week is all about having a relationship with God. Amen. Amen. Revelations chapter 3, verse 20 says, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person 
and they with me. And the Bible says that thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. And the Bible also says that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You see, we have to have a relationship through reading the word of God. We must get into the word every day. We want to build a relationship with Jesus. You know, the, 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 big, the big question this day and age is, oh, religion, religion. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had lately where it's talking, you know, the first thing people do is they go, well, I'm not religious. Well, I said, I, I said, I'm not either. I'm not either. I hate religion. It's about having a relationship with Jesus. How do we have a relationship with Jesus? Well, we must know what he's about. We must know who he is by reading the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto thy feet and a light unto thy path. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Jesus said he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through him. So we must have a relationship with him. And God is urging his church to have a relationship, to have a relationship, a walking, working, living relationship. And there's with him. too much religion in the church today. And you can see that there's too much religion because too many people, come on, they don't come to church unless they're in trouble. And that's when, when they're in a dire need, when they're in perilous times, when a crisis hits them. But they, the problem is they have no relationship with God. They have no relationship and they show up and they just want to use God because they're in trouble. It's like the person that came to me recently and they came to me and they said, they said to me, they said, they said, listen, I've got this great idea and, and, and I know that you've got all these contacts and, 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 and everything. And if, you know, and if you'll just, you know, I got this, this, this thing and if you'll just get behind this thing, I know that we can make a lot of money. And I, and I looked at him and I thought to myself, my God, you know, uh, yeah, that would be possible if I knew anything about you. But I'm not in a relationship with you. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Right? I, I don't know you. And if I don't know anything about you, come on. I cannot. Come on. Get it. Come on. Help me right now. Come on. Come on. I'm telling you something right now. I'm not investing in something that I don't know anything, anything about the guy. And this is how many people treat God. The more we find out about God, the more we realize who God is, the more we'll invest in him. Because we will see his goodness more. You know, we'll see that his truth is religious, true. Religious people, they, 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 they treat God this way. They, they don't live for him. They don't worship him. They don't give. But when they're in trouble, they show up. And they, and, and they expect something from God. And when God doesn't give it to them, they get an attitude. Miracles begin with relationship. Mary and Martha sent for Jesus. They were already in relationship with him. But listen to what happens. He doesn't come. And Lazarus died. Why? I'm telling you today, it's because this is a setup. Sometimes you're waiting for God. And stuff dies. What do you do when you've done everything that you know to do? And you've sent for God to come. And he doesn't show up. And he doesn't know. At least it seems like he doesn't know. It's 1159. Anybody been there? Yes. And things go from bad to worse. Can I see the hands of anybody if I'm talking about reality today? Sure. This brings us to our second point. Yes. The second thing that happens in the story is what I'm going to call release. The stage of release. release. Everybody say release. Release. Release is the stage when you have come to the place that you've come and you've just got to let go. Everybody say, let go. Let go. Let go. And let God. Let go. You see, a prayer of release to God is something that we have to do when we've got to let go 
of our control. A prayer of release is, Josh, something that I have done everything that I know to do. Yes. Right? I've tried it. I've tried it, and it didn't work. It didn't work out. I prayed, and nothing happened. Right. Mm. It's okay. What do you have to do? Everybody shout out say, I, I have to release it. Right now, just say, Lord, Lord. I don't know who this is for right now, but just tell God right now, say, God, God I release it. I release it. Ooh, hallelujah. You know, I think that one let's thing, go. and let's go back to point one again about relationship, that stage of relationship. You know, I think that there's something here that the Lord wants to do for many of us who there's been delays in, in relationships and there's been seemingly a, a death or our situations have failed and how, how do we, we, we respond? Uh, I just think that, that the prayer is such a representation of how we Absolutely. are to live our life. And so as the uh, Martha and, 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 and these people, they, they pray, they release it. It was it's a turning, it. turning point, wasn't it? Everybody say turning point. Turning point. Turning point. Mm -hmm. Let's pray this together, First Peter 5, 7. I cast all, come on, all, your all, your anxiety, all my anxiety on you because you care for me. Because you care for me. Just lift up your hands to him. Lord, Lord I turn it over. I turn it over. I, I release it. I release it. Faith is coming to me. Faith is coming Faith to is me. Faith is sustaining me. Faith is sustained. I release it. I release it. I let it go. I let it go. I will not hold on to it. I will not hold on to it. That you can come in right now. Come in right now. I let go. I let go. I let go. Step in. Step in. Step in. Step in, Lord. Come 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 step in, Lord. How desperate are you? How desperate are you for God to move? How desperate, church, are you? Step in, Lord! Step in! Step in! Step in, Lord. Lift your hands to him. 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 Step in, Lord. Step in, Lord. Step in, Lord. Yes, Lord. Step in, Lord. Step in, Lord. Step in, Lord. Tell him, step in, step in, step in, Lord. Step in, Lord. Ekalama subrande de de. See, radical faith. Everybody right now say radical faith. Radical faith. Releases, it to God. Releases it to God. Everybody say amen. amen. See, as long as you hold on to it, God can't get a hold of it. He can't step in until you release it with radical faith. That's when the supernatural power of God is released into that dead thing and it is raised. Oh, come on, give God praise right now. Come on, it is raised. Come on, back to life. Just release it over to God. Yeah, we can't do it on our own. We can't fix it on our own. We can't sustain it on our own. We have to release it to God. Yeah. Yeah. We have to release it to God. Yeah. Mary and Martha released it to God. Everybody say amen. They, how many of you know they couldn't heal Lazarus? Yes. Come on, talk to me. Yes. They couldn't fix the situation. Right. So what did they do? They turned it over to God. Everybody say release it. Release, release it. See, the, and, and I'm going to show you something right now. This is crazy, okay? This is crazy. You never, I never saw this before. But how did they do it? How did they turn it over to God? What did they do? Listen to me right now. This is going to be crazy to you right there. The proof is they buried him. Whenever you're in trouble, something that you can't fix, you go to step three, and I'm going to tell you what it is. Step three. Everybody say, roll the stone. Roll the stone. Roll the stone. You got to roll the stone over that situation. Come on. You got to roll. Come on. The stone. How many of you are getting this right now? Come on. They roll the stone. And what? when you roll the stone, what are you really doing? Come on. When you roll the stone, you're covering the mess up. Yes. Come on. How many of you have ever rolled the stone? Yeah. Come on, over a situation. Come on, and we've all done it. You can say amen. 
right now. Come on. When you can't fix it, and I'm going to tell you something right now. The body of Christ is great at rolling the stone. Come on. And when it begins to, come on, talk to me here. When it begins to stink, come on. What do you do? You roll the stone for survival. Come on. You got to cover it up. You can't just let Lazarus sit on the couch. <laughs> come on. Come on. Let's get real. And I'm going to tell you right now, we've all made mistakes. And when I was reading this, the Lord said, cover it up. And he gave me 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. Above all, love each other deeply. Because love does what? Covers over. Come on, you can put your hands together right now. Come on, God wants to cover. Come on, come on. I'm going to tell you, I want to run around this church right now. God wants to cover some stuff up today. We all need to bury something today. I'll get better amens than that. You, you don't get religious on me now. I said we all need to bury some things today. And, and let me tell you right now, this is all about forgiveness. Forgiving others. During this season. Amen? I want to tell you something right now. Mary and Martha had to roll the stone. They had to release it to God Amen. and watch what happens because let me tell you something right now Jesus cannot show up until they've rolled the stone Amen. are you with me yeah. read the story come on Jesus waits for the stone to be rolled then he shows up oh someone say hallelujah yeah. Yeah. this good yeah. okay watch this here because I want to show you this right now on his arrival John eleven seventeen, Jesus found that Lazarus had been dead in the tomb. Everybody shout four days. Four days. Four this days. is the year. What is this year? Four. 2020. Four. This is the year of the... Uh, come on. I'm telling you, you can't make it up. Somebody can give God praise. I'm telling you something. He's getting ready to roll a stone. Oh, give God some praise right now. John 11, 21 and 22. Lord, Martha says to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Amen. Come on, someone would say hallelujah. Whatever. Woo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm, a, I'm gonna, I wanna shout, I'm gonna shout and run right now. I got a revelation about something I've been asking my God. Get ready. Someone shake your neighbor right now. Come on, I don't care if you know him or not. Shake him a little bit. Everything that can be shaken. Come on, we'll be shaken. So only that that's supposed to remain. Come on, we'll remain. Oh, I'm telling you, something's gonna get shook inside of you. And I tell you, hey, God shook me. My God. Whatever you ask. Listen to me here, right here. Martha, oh my God. Martha gets, here it comes, right here. Someone shout right now. Point number three, shout revelation. Revelation. Come on, what does Martha get? She gets a revelation. Come on, she gets a revelation. Come on, as soon as Jesus shows up, listen, I'm going to show you. It's right in the text that you read. She says, I know. The word to know is the word gnosis. It means I know that I know. She gets a my God, she, she gets a now revelation. Look at what she says. Even now. Someone shout, even now. even now. She says, even now, I know, I know that I know that I know whatever you ask, come on, God will do. Amen. Whatever. Oh, someone shout, whatever. whatever. Shout, whatever. Even now. Even now. Shout, shout now. Now, now I want to ask, does anybody need a revelation today? Come on, one revelation from God will change everything. She gets, a, she gets an even now revelation. You've got, I'm telling you something right now, you've got the power, she has the revelation. Come on, you've got the power. Something shifts inside of her. You've got the power.
power to raise him up. Yes, it's bad. Yes, it stinks. The situation is a mess. But even now, someone shout, even now. Even now. This is for somebody here today watching online. I don't know where you are. There is an even now miracle in the house about to hit you. Oh, come on. Clap your hands right now. Come on. Come on. You've done everything. Come on. That you know to do. Come on. You've tried everything. Come on, come on, and it looks like it was, it, 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 everything failed. It looked like it's too late, but I want someone to shout, come on, he's the God of even now. Come on, shout it, he's the God of even now. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, someone shout even now. Even now. Tell three people on this Palm Sunday, say, I still believe in God. Come on, tell them right now, say, I still believe, say, I believe that he's still doing Come on, I believe, come on, that he can touch your daughter. He can touch your son. Come on, I believe, come on, even now, he can save my family. Come on, I believe even now, he can heal my body. I believe even now, oh, come on, somebody, the best is yet to come. Come on, I believe for my children and my grandchildren. Shout even now. Come on, I believe everything's going to be all right. Shout even now. Even now. She, she got a hold of something called, point number four, are you glad you're here today? She got a hold of something called radical faith. Come on, I'm telling you, radical faith, I may not be able to see it. It may look like it's dead, but I believe that I am the head. Come on, and not the tail. Come on, I believe. I am above. And not beneath. I believe I'm blessed coming in. I believe I'm blessed going. I still, even though I can't see it, even though it looks like it's dead. Are you here today? Even though I've rolled the stone away out of it. Come on. I still, come on, give God some praise. Come on. Believe that he's the God. Come on. That is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can even imagine or think according to what? The power that's at work inside of us. Martha got some radical faith. Everybody say radical faith, radical faith. will roll away, roll away the, stone. the stone. See, you can't roll a stone away without radical faith. You may have rolled the stone over it. Are you getting this? But it takes radical faith to, to roll it back open. Are you getting this? Oh, yeah. The thing that looked dead, there's something in your life that has looked dead. That's right. But God, are you ready? Is about to restore it. Amen. Oh, anybody want to guess what point number five is? Restoration, restoration, restoration. Come on, the thing that the canker worm, come on, has tried. Oh, someone right now, come on. God is the God. Come on, you can get your hand up in the air. Get that palm. It's Palm Sunday up in the air. Begin to wave it at him right now. I believe you're the God of restoration. I believe the door is about to open. I believe what God has said look, that looks impossible is about to become possible. Power is here right now. Now, come on to roll the stone. Oh, give God some praise right now. Power is here to roll the stone away. This is a setup. God was setting the world up. And he's saying, get ready. It may look like Good Friday. Jesus hanging on the cross. But I've got some good news. I've read the end of the story. Come on. It may look like Friday, but Sunday's coming. Amen. Woo! Glory. Shout glory! Glory! Yeah. This was their Friday. Are you getting this? Yeah. Are you getting this? Yeah. But someone shout, Sunday's coming. Sunday's coming. You see, when Jesus got to the tomb, it was all a setup. When he goes to the cross, he had already defeated yep. death. 
at the tomb of Lazarus. Come on, he was not afraid to go to the cross. Come on, he already defeated the power of death. Now all he had to do is go to the cross and defeat sin so that the world could be saved. Oh, give God some praise right now. Come on, so that the world could be saved through him. That's why he's able to come in riding on a donkey and not a steed. You see, when a king rode into a city, they rode in one of two different ways. They rode, if they were going to be this warrior and they're going to conquer through that way. They made a declaration and they rode in on a steed with their army. But when a king knew that they were already victorious, they rode in on a donkey to communicate peace. Someone say hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to tell you, we need to make some righteous noise and have some righteous worship today. Come on, give God praise right now. Come on, because he rode in. Come on, give God some praise right now. Come on, Zechariah. Come on, rejoice greatly. Come on, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious lowly and riding on a donkey on a colt the foal of a donkey it was prophesied oh come on you can take two minutes right now yes, come on Lord. you get on your feet right now come on come on it's hallelujah. come on it, come on right now yes, you can Lord. give him some praise right now you can shout hallelujah right now come on glory to god lead him in a yes. shout right now come on hallelujah. yes lord yes lord Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I want everybody to say out loud, say restoration. Restoration. You ready for this? I'm ready. What brought about the restoration? All this Easter season, I've been asking God a question. Josh knows it. My family knows it. And I got the answer 11.59 today. Entire month of March, we've been praying about power to open doors. I've been asking God, something stood out. Right at the beginning, I started reading. The end of February, beginning of March, I started reading the Easter story. I love it. How many of you love the Easter story? By the way, do you know that the triumphal entry is the only other story besides the feeding of the 5,000 that's in all four of the Gospels. Something about this story. Are you here today? As I started reading, I saw where they came, the Mary and the Marthas, and they came to the tomb where Jesus was. How many of you know where Mary comes? Come on, talk to me, right? They come to the tomb, right? And the angel, how many of you know the angel's sitting there? You know the story. We'll be looking at it next week. And, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm blown away. Why did God have to send an angel to roll the stone away? I mean, he's the resurrected God. He says, I'm the resurrection and the life. He's the God of Ruach that breathed in man. He could have just gone and the stone would explode. Are you talking? Come on, talk to me here. Does anybody else think about these things like this? I, I think this way. I'm like, I said, to, I, said to, I said to him and I said to some other ministers one day, I said, why didn't he just, you know, and the stone just, come on, why do you have to have an angel come and roll the stone away? For the same reason that he has to have Mary and Martha roll the stone away. It took radical faith to roll the stone away. The man was dead inside there four days. Their brother was dead. Come on, the thing stuck. Come on, they had covered it up. Come on, if you want restoration, come on, you got to do something radical. Oh, give God some praise right now. Come on, if you got to do something radical with your faith. Come on, come on. I'm, I'm telling you, you got to do something radical. Here's the story. That's right. I'm going to show you right now. John chapter 11, verse 39. Jesus does not take the stone away. He tells them. Come on, look at it with me right here from the NIV. What does he say? Read it with me. What does he do? He says, take 
away the stone. Hey, anybody want to take the stone away with your faith today? Come on, come on. Does anybody want to roll the stone back today on something that looked like it was dead? Come on. Does anybody want to see life released into a situation? Take away. Read it right there. Say, say, read it with me. Take away the the stone. But uh, he said, but read what they said. But Lord said, Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time, there is a what? It stinks. How many of you know that thing that you covered up stinks? Right? For it has been what? Four days. Come on. I'm telling you, this is the year of the four. Someone shout, get ready, get ready, get ready. Jesus, look at this, verse 40. I did I not say, did I not come on, read it. Did I not tell you that if you what? Believe. If you have what? Radical faith. Come on. You will what? See the Does anybody want to see the glory of God over that thing right now? Come on. Give God some praise right now that you're believing God for. Everybody say out loud, say you gotta roll the stone away. To see restoration. To see restoration. Amen? Amen. So they took the stone away. Everybody say amen. Amen. Now last week, you know that we ministered inside the Bahamas. And something incredible happened at the lunch afterwards. We went over by ship, by a vessel. On an overnight, it was cheaper to take our family over. The reason I did it was I thought I was doing it was to save money. How many of you have ever done something and found out God was inside of it? It was cheaper for us because we saved two nights, because we were able to be on the water two nights. All the food was free, and, I was able, it, it, and it was cheaper than, it, the whole thing was cheaper than the airline flights there and back. I thought, this is crazy, but, you know, and the pastor told me to come that way. He said, this is how you should do it. And so we did it. And as we got on the ship, I started talking to my wife. I said, you know, this ship is incredible. We can take ministers. I can take ministers. I got all these relationships. I can send them over to the Bahamas. And this is how I'm going to start sending them over this way. They'll love it. Everybody say hallelujah. And so I got this idea to start to do something. Like, then we get to lunch. We get to lunch. And I couldn't believe it. But Robert Lockhart says to me, he says, listen, I want to do a Signs and Wonders conference. Would you bring all the ministers over? And I said, listen, man, that, God spoke to me about this, and that ship's an incredible thing, and I think it's a great way to do this. I think God's in this. Then we get back on the ship, 4.30 at night. Everybody else had their day excursion playing in the Bahamas, and, and I played hallelujah with God. Amen? Amen. And, and, and we saw incredible miracles happen inside the church. And uh, so we get back on the ship, and we're looking. We have, we, we, now it's late at night. It's getting late, and we're looking for dinner, and we're walking around. We're lost in the ship. It's a big ship, 1,500, 1500 people it takes, and it's big. And we were, we were on the wrong side of the ship. We thought we were on the right side of the ship. Have you ever been there in life, right? Thought you were, come on, right? Come on, talk to me here. And you're wandering around, and all of a sudden, this guy busts through the door. And he says, you look like you're lost. Amen. Somebody right now, I'm busting through your door. This is the year of the door. Someone say, hallelujah. He may look like this. Come on, are you getting this right here, right? And, and he says, uh, he says uh, we say, yeah, we're looking for dinner. And he says, well, you're not on the right end of the ship. And this is not going to, you know, uh, happen over here. He says, but I can show you how to get there. And so he has a strong accent. And, and I said uh, to him, I said, where's your accent from? He says, from Poland. And oh, she gets all excited. They're the two Polish. Two Polacks meet, hallelujah. <laughs> and they're having a great time connecting and everything. And so then he looks at her, he, not me, he looks at her, okay? He looks at her and he says, would you like to see the, I, I, I said to him, I said, are you the cat? I knew right away power was meeting power right there. And I knew, I said, you're the captain of the ship. And he said, yes, I am. And he says, would you like to go up on the bridge? So he takes us to the bridge of the ship. Someone shout favor. See, I believe this whole thing was prophetic. So we get up on the bridge of the ship, and who, look who he puts in the captain's chair right there. Come on, I told you, give God praise right now. Come on, I told you, he puts her in the captain's chair, and she's steer, able to steer the ship. 
He goes, look at the, the, the little toggle thing right here. You go this way, this way, this way, this way, right? And, and so this is crazy, right? Then he takes us outside. He shows us this other thing out there. We come back inside. And his first mate then, the guy that's over there, he says, hey, look, stop, look. This is crazy. You can't make it up here. He grabs the binoculars, the captain's binoculars, and he hands them to me. And he says, look out there. He said, a rocket just got launched. He said, Elon Musk just launched a rocket. So we got to see the rocket go off. From the bridge. Is anybody getting this? Somebody shout open doors. Are you getting this here? Right? And, and, and so then so then we start talking a little bit more. And the, there he is. There's the captain right there. We start talking. And you know what he says to me? He finds out about World for Jesus. Finds out all we're doing. And he says, you know what you need to do? This is what he tells me. He says, you know what you need? Not, you cannot make this up. He says, you know what you need to do? I'm telling you, this is what God's getting ready to do for you. The Lord told me he's going to open closed doors by Easter. Someone say hallelujah. Watch this here. The guy says to me, he says, you need to bring all the ministers. We can take 1,500 of them on the ship here. He said, and I'll let you use the theater over there, and you can preach. It holds 500, and you can do three services at a time. Come on, give God praise. He says, you can take over the whole ship. He said, he said and, 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 and we can make, he says, we can, he says, you and I can make, the captain says, you and I can make it happen. Anybody want to go on the ship with us? Let me see your hand right here. That's what I thought. We'll have an empty church. Hallelujah. That Sunday. Glory to God. Even Pastor Dave's hands waving over there. So check this out. Okay. This is crazy. So then he tells to me, he takes my phone number. This doesn't end here. He, he, he takes my phone number, right? And he says, now I'm going to have, uh, he says, I'm going to have a, a lady call you. She's going to set everything up. She says, he says, you'll never forget her name. I thought, how can I? I thought maybe it's Smith or Jones. And he says, her name's Anita Mitchell. And I said, the wife of Commander Mitchell that went into he uh, heaven and walked on the moon? That Anita Mitchell? He said, yeah, she's going to be giving you a call. Someone say open doors. Open doors. Amen. Now here's exactly what God is speaking to me. This is a prophetic event. If you need God to do this, I want you to get out of your chairs. Come on up here right now to the, to the uh, 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 instruments here. And I want us to close in prayer. Everybody say hallelujah. Amen. 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 Just let that run there, Dean, as they're coming up here right now. I want you to come right now. If you need a dream restored, if you need a door open by, by, by Easter here right now, come on, I want you to come very quickly up to the front, and we're going to pray for you right now. We're going to pray for one another. I believe this is going to be extremely prophetic today. Come on and get your toes all the way up to the front. We're going to make room for everybody inside the altars today. Hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hands to heaven right now. Father, I thank you right now. In the same way, when Jesus came to the tomb, he said to God, Lord, I know. Everybody shout out. Say, I know that you always hear me. Say, I know that you hear my prayers. For the sake of those who do not believe, I'm going to pray today, and I'm going to release radical faith. I believe today is my day. I'm going to shout to my Lazarus. I'm going to tell my Lazarus to come forth. That thing that looks dead is going to come back to life. In the mighty name of Jesus, right now, you ask the question, do I believe that you're the resurrection? This day, I make my confession by faith in this room, watching online. Right now, I confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is the resurrection. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. Today, I make him the Lord of my life. I ask him to come into my heart. He's knocking at my door. I open it wide. In any area where I've closed the door, I open it up right now. And I believe he's hearing my prayer. Today, I believe, is a setup. I received the revelation of the Word of God to shift and change every situation.
that thing that I've rolled the stone, I've closed the door. Lord, right now, that thing that looked like it was dead, my Lazarus, right now, I'm going to speak to it in the name of Jesus. On the count of three, I'm going to shout to my Lazarus to come forth in the name of Jesus. Get ready.
these weddings. We're doing all these weddings. This is a crazy. We're getting ready to do your wedding as well. This is crazy. Everybody say hallelujah. I'm having so much fun. Weddings are a whole lot better than funerals. Glory to God. Yeah. Unless you're raising the dead. These guys, their thing, their marriage, their relationship looked like it was dead. But God's restoring their relationship. They're getting remarried in my office next week. Cannot make this stuff up. Everybody say, can't make it up. Amen. Our God is a God of miracles. He's a God of signs. Amen. And wonders. Are you ready to see the greatest signs and wonders you've ever seen in your life? Because that's what God told me between now and the signs and wonders conference. We're not waiting for the signs and wonders conference to see the signs. They're going to break out on Easter and they're going to manifest all the way through. Oh, come on. You can give God praise right now. Someone shout, come for still a, a, a couple people here that, you know, there's still a feeling of that need for completion. So I just, I don't know, I feel like even just to be able to leave the altars open today. And uh, if you need minister, uh, ministry from anybody, a situation you need prayer for, we have uh, elders here that are ready. You know, uh, today's a day of life. Maybe there's some here that something's just not quite complete. There's situations where, you know, Lazarus type situations where it's been buried, right? And uh, it feels like it's over. And I just want to encourage you today that there is life. Life yeah, I want, I want my elders to come on up here and, and CGIA ministers come on up here very quickly here. Just come on up to the platform up here. You step up, up up here so they know who you are right here. Come on up over here. Yeah, come on, light yourself well, up here. And if you need prayer right now, that's it. Just uh, come on up. Okay? And uh, we've got a room on this side, maybe for one of you over here, maybe. One, one of you guys can. Or Tim, you can shift up over here. Come on up here. That's fine. Amen. Or you can step down to them either way, but come on up and let them know that you need additional prayer. Father, we release this message. We release this Lazarus anointing right now today to meet all the other anointings that are in the house today and prepare us for Holy Week in every area. Lord, I, we don't want anybody to leave here without them receiving the miracle that they need today. So God, Lord, we're going to take our time here right now and process everything that you have for us in the name of of Jesus Christ. Step up in the worship team says you can stay in worship. Go to whatever you need to do. If it needs to just be between you and God, you can do that. If you need the agreement of faith, step up right now and we'll pray for you that way. Okay? Amen. 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 You guys can go down and begin to pray. You guys can step down. If they're still down here right now, you can go down and begin to pray for people right now. when he had the event of the fallout here and he's completely healed today. Come on, give God praise right now. Come on, had to have the operation in the in the hospital. You're a walking, you're you're our Lazarus right here in Jesus' name. I just want to thank everybody from the, the deepest part of my heart for your prayers. I felt them and they were being released in that place. And every time I think of the love that you released into me, the chairs are rolling right now. You can't see them, but you can hear them.
hear them in my voice. And every time, every time, I cry. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you in the 714 family. Come on, say a great big amen. Amen. Hug somebody right now and let them yes. know that you love them today. Amen. Just let them know that you love them. <laughs> You're a blessing. We love you. Amen. Amen. Remember, love covers. Amen. Amen. Love covers a multitude of sins. Amen.
Emotional